Hey guys, Wolfgore here, and welcome back to the channel. Thank you for being here. Update video, I guess. So I guess we'll start with book stuff, as that's kind of the main course for the channel. So where are we with the book? Well, as you know, the first draft was finished back in January, February, March. March 23rd, I finished the first draft, and I've just been working on what I'm thinking of as the second draft currently. It's the, the first major pass I'm just going through start to finish and editing the whole thing and uh, just trying to bring it all up to my current writing level. I'm rewriting sections that I feel need it, um, though I've not done a lot of rewriting. Uh, I have, I think since the last time we checked in together, I have rewritten chapter one and I think it's a lot better now. And I am also currently rewriting the prologue. And the prologue is fairly long. It's like uh, like two, two and a half chapters in length. And I'm trying to figure out how to split that up so it's not such a big thing. But anyways, I'm rewriting the prologue as well. And that's going really, really well. Because uh, originally it was... Uh, originally, I was sitting right there on my deck. And uh, just sort of appreciating the majesty of nature. Uh, it was a little high. Um, and the story just started coming to me and I as I was sitting there I was just thinking oh this is just uh just sort of like the bones of a short story and short stories and little things like that come to me all the time but obviously I'm so busy I don't always write them all down but this one I don't know it really just kind of started like sinking its hooks into me I was like oh this is this is good and I was just thinking it through and thinking it through and I was like why don't I just like there's nobody around that's the beauty of living out here and I just started like narrating it out loud and it was kind of slow and choppy but it was like I was creating the story on the fly and I got like I don't know maybe 10 15 20 minutes into that process and I was like oh my god like I need to go write so I ran to my computer I just started writing up a storm and but I didn't really know what I was trying to write who was actually telling the story like is it the same narrator the same narrator that's trying to narrate you know the rest of the book is it anyways so it was kind of like disjointed and sloppy and I, I cleaned it up, but I still, it still needed some work and it just needed like a, a clearer, more decisive nature. So I ended up changing it so that the character who was originally narrating it in draft one is now having a conversation with another important character, which would have been there in that kind of scene um, that was causing the story to come up in the book. And now they're actually having like this back and forth uh, sort of heavy hitters conversation and it's much much more interesting this way having it be the back and forth between the characters and having a little scene setting rather than just diving right into an, a narrated story and then once the prologue's over having to like switch over to a new narrator I don't it wouldn't have been as good it, and, and it's definitely writing a lot better this time so I'm really excited to share that with you guys when I can and as for when that is that's hard to say um the further I get, it's kind of like with anything, the more you learn about any given topic, it's kind of like the more you realize you don't know about that topic. And while I am very happy with how far I've come, couldn't be happier, honestly, I'm very proud of what I've done so far. I'm even proud of the first draft. I mean, just finishing a 150,000 word novel alone is a real accomplishment. But as I've been reading more books, um, just devouring books, um, I'm like, you know, there's so much more that I can do with this. And I'm picking up on little techniques and patterns that I see other authors writing with. And I'm like, that's good. Like, I might have had a little of that here, but you have it, you know, going throughout the entire book. And I'm like, oh, that's better. And I, I don't want to be too specific with this kind of stuff. But the point is, I'm just aware that... There's a lot more that I can do to make the book better, and it's not going to be done until it's the best I can possibly make it. I have no deadline, right? It's like when J.K. Rowling wrote the first Harry Potter book, I believe she worked on it for 12 years. I don't think... <coughs> I don't think she was, you know, actively working on it that entire time, I'm guessing. But the point being... For your first book, especially when you're starting with like no educational background in literature or English or writing or anything like that, it's like I think I just got to take as much time as I need, make it the best I can possibly make it, and I think I'm going to need to do that to get published. And then once I'm published, then 
I can really dive into book two and three and four and five and six and seven and so on and have that skill set fully developed for then. So as much as I want to rush and I want to write full time and I, I love being an electrician, but I don't want to do it anymore. I want to write full time, you know, and get into more of that in a second, I guess. But as much as I want to rush through these early stages and get to that point where it's like I'm published and I can do this full time, I just have to continuously remind myself to take a deep breath. This is going to be a journey. I'm only nine months in. I'm only nine months in and uh, that's, I'm still pretty green, you know, and that's okay. That's just life. You know, if you want to get really good at something, you've got to put in the hours. And I do put in the hours. I wake up at 4.30 every single morning and I write until seven. Granted, there's, you know, bathroom breaks and making coffee and stretching. So there's about, I average about two hours a day, give or take a little seven days a week, no breaks. I'll never take breaks. I, I write every day and I will always write every day unless I'm in a coma or something. Knock on wood. But yeah, in terms of how far I actually am in the second draft process, I am on, I'm in the chapter 50s. So I'm most of the way done, but I was just feeling like I was just, yeah, just going over these chapters over and over again. I was like, I need a break. So I swapped over to the prologue, which is technically the beginning of the book, but it's, I hadn't touched it yet. So I'm very close to finishing the second draft. I've probably got just a couple more weeks. Uh, before the second draft is done, and then I'll be starting a third draft, and I'll, I'll be saving them incre in incrementally, and uh, so I have like the old first draft, and I still have the old first draft saved, so I can like look back and compare them. Granted, that would take forever, but and I will probably never get around to doing that, but I can. Um, but yeah, there there will definitely be a third draft after this, as like I must have fixed thousands of sentences and and come up with dozens of new names that are now retroactively being applied to situations where that thing or person's name needs to be. And I've gone through dozens and dozens of specific things that have come to mind and I wrote it down on a checklist, like, hey, you need to add this in this thing or, or you need to change it or you need to subtract it, etc., etc. I've gone through dozens of those, but as I get through my list and I'm almost to the end of the book, that list has filled back up and there's like 40 items on that list. And it's like, Again, as much as I want to be done, I want to get it published, it's like I'm not unhappy with that prospect at all because that means it's continuing to get better. I'm continuing to find new things to improve. And as long as it's improving, it's going up like a stock, you know? And that's what matters. That's That just fills me with confidence. Even though it doesn't give me immediate gratification, I know I'm working towards long-term, big-scale gratification, so it's worth it. I mentioned work though earlier. I'm uh, coming up on four and a half years as an electrician, making decent money, having a good time at work. You know, I'm a, uh, I don't want to do it anymore. You know, it's, I like being an electrician and I like making a decent wage and being able to afford my own place and all of that. Like it's, it's wonderful. I'm not unhappy with my job, but it just, the way I described it to one of my best friends was it just feels like I'm wasting time. Uh, which is frustrating and I'm not, I mean, it, it's subjective. So it's, wow, well, it's neither here nor there. But the, the thing that I likened it to was like, if you had a good job and you had like your first kid and you realize like this, my kid is my passion in my life and I just want to be at home with my kids so I can raise them, but you have to go to work so that you can make money so that somebody else can raise your kids so you can pay that person to do it. Like, it just feels redundant. It feels silly. It's like, well, why wouldn't I just stay home and not make that money just to give it to somebody else just to raise my kid? Like, that's the only thing that I can think to liken it to is that I just feel like, oh, why do I have to go to a regular job? I know what I want to be doing with my time. I want to write eight hours a day so freaking bad. But say lovey, you got to get, you got to get there. You know, it's like, I don't come from a rich family. I don't have anybody that's just going to be like, here write full time. Don't worry about work, you know? And that's okay because once I ultimately get there, it'll be that much more worth it because I made it happen. And I made it happen while working full time at a big boy job. And that'll be awesome to be able to tell people. <sighs> but I wish I was there right now, but it's okay. Anyways, I'm going in circles at this point. Other than that, like just to kind of go into like personal life a little bit, I guess. Um, 
I don't know if you guys, some of you who are watching this, you were probably watching the vlog a year ago. And I'd say around a year ago, I was on a really, really good kick. It was the same kick that kind of propelled me into writing and finding it through getting back into YouTube. And I was on a really, really good kick and I was exercising like a maniac. Like we're talking like one to two hours a day, seven days a week. Like it was like by far the most hardcore I've ever uh, exercised. And I just felt amazing. And I was just a ball of energy all the time. And you know, life wasn't perfect, but it, things were really, really good. Well, when I moved here, I don't know what it was, but for some reason, uh, the joint problems that I've always had, like wrist, elbows, uh, upper spine, um, knees for sure. You know, I've had joint problems since my early 20s and my mom told me that I had like joint problems from when I was like a little kid and it's just something that I have to deal with genetically, but they just, oh my God, they hit me so hard right after I moved. I don't know if it was the stress of moving. I don't know if it was like a dietary change or something, but it's like, it just came with a vengeance. And my right wrist in particular was like absolutely chronic pain, just every single day, every action. And I'm an electrician. So I use my wrists a lot. And like, I have to do like hard work with my wrists. And we're not just talking about twisting, you know, screws gently all day. Like really put a lot of tax on my wrist. So that sucked. And it's like, I felt I had to stop working out because when I would work out, it would very clearly inflame my joints and make this problem worse. And I'm just like, fuck, but you know, I've got my writing. I'm just going to focus on that. Going to focus on work. Just going to take it as easy as I possibly can on my joints. So that's what I've been doing, but they've continued to get worse, unfortunately. And they were getting so bad that I was wearing a brace all the time. I'm like, got like multiple braces off the internet and you know I'm wearing them at night when I sleep and I'm taking like fish gel capsules because they're supposed to help with your joints and I'm rubbing CBD goop on them and stuff and it's like nothing's really working they're just progressively getting worse and I'm going like oh fuck oh fuck oh fuck you know like I need my joints to work to do my job as an electrician I, I can't have this not to mention you know just having your body failing on you in your early 30s is is really scary and intimidating and that's been really bothering me. And that combined with just other stuff in life and the lack of exercise, like I've, I still exercised a little, but it was nothing compared to what I was doing, um, really just had me feeling down. And I was just slipping back into an old state of depression. And then I'm just feeling frustrated because I was like, oh my God, I thought I had beat this forever. And yet here I am fighting with the depression monkeys again, you know, just climbing on my back. And it was just so lame. Um, but. Thankfully, and I am so incredibly grateful for this, my brother happened to mention something to my dad uh, about a supplement that he was taking for his joints. He's six years older than me, so he's, I think, 37 right now. And uh, it's called glucosamine. And he said after about a month, it really started helping him with his joints. So my dad started taking it. He told me about it. And I started taking it a little over a week ago. Not, it hasn't even been 10 days yet. I think I'm on like the ninth day of taking it. And with on, within the second day, I was already noticing a huge difference. And like, my joint is not 100% yet, but like it is multitudes better. Like it, it's 80% better. And that's huge. <laughs> like, and this stuff, it's like, I think it was like 30, $30 for like a 30 day supply. So it's like a dollar a day to fix my freaking joints, even if they're not perfect. It's like, oh my God. So just as like a public services announcement, like if you have joint pain and it's a problem for you, try glucosamine. Like I'm, I'm not sponsored or anything. Like you don't have to try it, but seriously, like it made all the diff it's making all the difference in the world for me and saving me from a really scary, uh, uncertain situation. So glucosamine, I just had to tell you guys in case that helps some of you out at some point. You know, my decaf is gone and uh, I think that's a good enough update for now. Uh, so I just want to thank you guys so much for being here. I love your faces and I will talk to you soon. Uh, it might be months from now, but at any rate, I will be back and this book is coming. Believe you me. Love you guys. Beard heart.